Coke. Should we lock up people that have had sexual trauma in their childhood because they tend to become abusers in the future? Well, you know, statistically, that's like they say that it's not really true, like it, that abuse patterns don't continue. And maybe in sexual capacity, it does. But like with, you know, physical abuse or things like that, because if that did happen, then over society, it would repeat and repeat and repeat. And then everybody would be abused. The idea we should lock up anyone with sexual trauma is horrific. The context around this statement makes it even worse. They were talking about people who took their kids to drag shows, calling them groomers and abusers, and that it would cause childhood sexual trauma. But I think that we, we do need to get like these people help or at least shame them into wanting to get their own help. I like shame more than helping them, to be honest. I've been saying the shame thing forever. Healthy levels of shame needs to be brought back to society. I think I said it on here like 20 million times. Shame serves a purpose. So you think there's a healthy level of shame? Let's test that theory. This is Rebel HQ. I'm Sandy Lovas. You can't shame someone into being something they're not. The only thing that does is make vulnerable people feel isolated and unaccepted, which often leads to tragic outcomes. There is no healthy level of shame. But these women would rather try to force people to conform to their values than accept anyone who falls outside their narrow definitions of what people should be. It's becoming common for people on the right to publicly bully and persecute folks for wanting to change society for the better. Dennis Prager stoops so low as to say this after a caller asked if he had the guts to go and talk to the parents of the children shot and killed in Texas. Of course, I would be honored to speak to them and tell them they're wrong. Honored. It would be, it would be one of the highlights of my life to talk to these grieving people and tell them that their reactions, though completely understandable, will do nothing to prevent other kids and other parents from the same suffering. Since these women think shaming is such a good thing, these two women are so interchangeable, you didn't even notice I swapped their faces. They have unhealthy levels of masochism. I'm not kink shaming, but too much of anything is bad. They're promoting a society that would keep them out of work in the kitchen and raising the next generation of racist robots. They're teaching women it's more important to fake who you are rather than being happy, which leads to a lifetime of misery. They need to grip as much as they can now before the men of the right feel they've gone past their best before date. They think of themselves as strong women influencers, but in reality, it's their superficial traits that keep them valuable in the eyes of right-wing men. And unfortunately for them, what's considered acceptable changes faster than a corporate logo in Pride Month. They're nothing more than placeholders for the next model. Their mandatory conforming to conventional femininity makes for a culture that suppresses freedom of expression, individuality, and acceptance of oneself. They're so shallow inside, a piece of paper has more definition than them. And it would be my honor to say to Dennis Prager's face, here he is looking like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man's racist uncle while acting like the Proud Boy's substitute stepdad. If it wasn't for his wealth, he'd be wrestling pizza rats for leftovers in the subway. He's the embodiment of moldy white bread with expired mayonnaise and white supremacy. He views himself as an intellectual and an ideal example of what men should strive to be. But in reality, he hasn't had an original thought in, um, well, no, wait, Last year? No, that wasn't, um, eh, eh, you got me. And the only women who want to be with him are dried up old Karens who are simply too tired to demand to see the manager anymore. He rejects the label of homo sapien because he thinks it makes him sound gay. So it's best just to refer to him as a Neanderthal. If it weren't for the imposed hierarchy he's trying to enforce, he'd be seen as the dirt pile king of the hill he is, proudly standing 18 inches above the rats he stole the pizza from. And finally, Dennis Prager is a toxic stew of misogyny, queerphobia, racism, and a pathetic excuse of a homo sapien, oops, sorry, excuse me, Neanderthal, filled with cigar ash, over-roasted coffee grains, creamer powder, and whatever it is you call the stuff you pick out from under your toenails after a long walk through the swamp in flip-flops. I could care less about these kinds of insults being thrown at me. I mean, I look through the comment sections of my videos and I see certain trends. A lot of people try insulting me by calling me some sort of vampire. Like seriously, I have no idea why people are getting that vibe from me. Like I don't, I don't see it at all. Like I don't, I don't get it. The reason I don't care is because I'm grounded in principles. I'm secure and confident with who I am. My values are based in reality and I'm not here for selfish reasons. I'm doing my part to help make the world a better place for everyone, including the people who insult me. People on the right often can't handle the shaming and bullying they inflict on others because the only thing that gives them any significance is surface level, so it's easy to poke holes in it. They melt down with the slightest pushback because there's nothing holding them up. Yet, 
They don't blink an eye when their principles are attacked because it's hard to attack a person's principles when they have none. For more of my stuff, look for me on social media as left of the box. Don't forget to hit buttons and leave comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, get informed, get involved.